Hi, Tom Richardson for New England Boating, and we're in the shop today with special guest Kevin Coffey. He's with R&W Rope. They're based in New Bedford, and they're a distributor of marine uh, ropes and lines. And today, Kevin is going to show us how to uh, splice a double braided line. And tell us uh, why a boater would like to know this particular skill. Well, it's, it's a good skill to know. Uh, mm -hmm. You can often used in dock lines, uh, running rigging, halyards, etc. Mm -hmm. um, it's a neat neat skill to learn. You get to avoid having to come to a rigger to have it done professionally. And there's a certain amount of pride in being able to do it yourself. Sure thing. Well, let's see how it's done. Correct. Yeah. Uh, now, you brought a few uh, specialty tools that people would uh, need to own to, to do this sort of thing. Can you, can you run through some of them? Sure. These here are Samson tubular feds. Mm -hmm. um, the, they're the tool that's very useful in splicing. One of the great things about them is a fid is a reference of uh, measurement, of length. Uh, this particular thing is broken down into three parts. The full length of it is a full fid. The back third of it is a short fid. And the other two thirds is called a long fid. Mm -hmm. These are the measurements we use when we are doing the splicing. Okay. Other tools you may need, scissors, some good tape, and a marker. Right. So you got a good, good, pretty hefty set, set, uh, set of shears here, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sharp scissors are good. Right. That's good. Excellent. Well, let's uh, let's get started and uh, uh, show us how to uh, splice this double braid rope. Absolutely. Okay. So before we begin, Kevin, tell us a little bit about the line that we're dealing with here. This is referred to as a double braid line. Mm -hmm. It has a cover and a core. Both yep. of them are braided. Mm -hmm. it makes a double braid line. Yep. This particular one is a half inch nylon very commonly used as a dock line. To start, you want to make sure that you have a clean cut end, not a melted one, mm -hmm. which we do. With a half inch line, we'll be using a half inch fid. Mm -hmm. Now you've uh, already, I see you've like served this or, or taken a few wraps with the, the masking tape around it correct. first to keep it from sort of unraveling, correct? That's exactly, yep, that okay. is correct. To start from the end of the line, we will come in one full fid. Mm -hmm. Just make a mark. Now, if we were making a dock line, we want to make the size of the eye with a uh, with a piece of hardware. The eye would only be a tiny little amount. Mm -hmm. Whereas we're going to make a dock line, we need a much larger eye to go over the cleat. Sure. Once we have the size of the eye that's desired. You go right across from your first mark, mm -hmm. just put another mark there. From this mark, you will continue down one long fid length, okay. which is two thirds of the fid. Just put a tiny little mark there as well. From here, we need to go down about, about five feet. Mm -hmm. We just want to tie a little slip knot. Now that we have the cover all laid out, and we go back to reference the size of the eye that we wanted, this was our first mark, this is our second mark, mm -hmm. this is where we want to take the core out, mm -hmm. right at this mark. Yep. And to do that, on the outside, we just push these fibers aside, mm -hmm. And the best way to do it is to bend the line at a hard, hard angle. And what is that tool you're using there? This is called a Swedish fid. Uh -huh. Any pointy device really will work. Okay. Actually, if you had a smaller fid, it'd be it'd be pointy enough that you could actually enough to just. Yep. So you're pushing back that uh, those outer those outer wraps. That's correct. Okay. Just pushing aside these outer strands, and you can see the inner core there. Mm -hmm. We can very gently, making sure we're grabbing the core and not the cover. Sure. Go ahead. Look at that, it just comes right just out. Pull huh? it right out. This is one of the manufacturer's ID markers. Okay. It just gets in the way. We can go ahead and just. Don't worry that about up. that. Don't worry about that <laughs> just at all. Throw just it away. Gets in the way. Now. Once we have the core out of the cover, we have both bitter ends, we need, can go ahead and get rid of all this slack we just created. Okay, so you're just kind of stretching it just out. Just milking it yep. nice and gently on the cover 
do it once or twice and you can see it has pulled back in okay. which is what we want. When we lay it out the inner part, the core, will now be slightly longer than the cover mm -hmm. and what we are going to do is just mark where the core comes out of the cover. Okay, gotcha. Just a simple little dot. From this point, we can go ahead, pull the core back out. From our reference point there, that one little dot we did, mm -hmm. using our FID, we will go one short FID length. And on this one, you can mark all the way around the core, so it's easy to find later. Okay. So we have moved in one short fid length. Now from that mark, we want to go one full, one entire fid length, plus one short one. And again, I'm going to make a mark all the way around the core. Where can you buy these fids? Are they can you buy them at a West Marine or or is um, it a special a specialty item? You can buy them at R and W Rope. There you go. <laughs> um, there are different brands of fids, mm -hmm. um, and different uh, different stores will carry different styles of fids. Mm -hmm. um, but this is your pref preferred one here. Yes, the Swedish fid. Uh, this, these are Swedish. Sweet. These are Samson. Oh. Yep. So. We have now finished making the marks on the core, and as you can see, when you go all the way around, they're quite visible, easy to pick out. Mm -hmm. The idea on a double braid splice is the core goes back down into the cover, and the cover is going to get buried down into the core. Okay. To do that, we will take our core and it's going to enter the cover at the first mark that we had made. So this is going to be the size of the loop we wanted. Mm -hmm. So we need to take the core and it's going to go right back down into the cover. Easiest way to do that is the beauty of these fids. They slide right in nice and easy. I'm going to take this. So you're putting in, that end, are you going to use another fit to, oh, in, no. inside of the, the core? Okay. Yep. Take a little tape to make sure it little, stays on there while we're working tape? it down. Electrical tape works quite well, masking tape works. You don't need a lot of it. Just one or two simple wraps to help hold it in place. Now, this is milking it down in. We've now gone past the size of the eye we want. Mm -hmm. And where we want to come out is on that last mock we made. As we're pushing this fid down, we want to make sure it does not capture the other half of the core. Mm -hmm. An easy way to tell if you're doing that is just pull a little bit. So, yeah. By doing that, it also introduces more slack here. Makes it a lot easier on us to move this down. So then you just poke it right through. Poke it the right outer through covering. where your mark is. Mm -hmm. Gently, you don't want to uh, really damage or disturb any of the fibers there. And sometimes this takes a little patience. Sometimes it can be quite difficult and tight in there. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing it, not me. <laughs> uh, well, often, you know, when you rush it, it uh, you end up pulling it right off that piece of tape on yeah, the bed and you got to start over. all over again. There you go. There it comes out. We have now put the core back into the cover. 
Now we want to take the cover, mm -hmm. put it down into the core. We will do that on these two heavy marks we made. Yep. We're going to go in there. We're going to come out there. Okay. Same trick. Take one of your fids. Insert it right in the center without capturing any of the other strands. And, and you'll know if you do that, it will stop pushing in okay. easily. Okay, pretty, pretty yeah. clear. And again. Stick that right into the back end of the fid. Small wrap of tape. There we go. So we come out mm -hmm. at the other mark. Again, nice and gently. You don't need to force it. You don't need to... Yeah. No brute force needed there. Now, we're almost there. Mm -hmm. We have put the cover, uh, the core down into the cover. Yep. The cover is now back into the core. We need to tighten up what they call the crossover right there by just pulling on each end. And you can see it kind of cinches it, it right down on it. It sucks right up yeah. into each other. Nice. So and just tight. a few good pulls and correct. Okay. Yep. Now I am taking all the slack out. Do it once or twice to make sure you've got the slack out. Okay. And I will now make a little mark where the core has exited the cover. The purpose of that is all this beyond is now excess. We won't be needing it. Okay. So you cut that right Go off. Go ahead and cut it right off. Again, sharp scissors are great. Knife and a tape would work just fine. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about this ragged end on here. Not oh, yet. Not yet. Okay. I don't. Want, I'm jumping the gun here. There you are. <laughs> what What we need to do now, as you were saying about this ragged end, <clears throat> is called a taper. Okay. The reason we need to taper these is any abrupt change in diameter in a line causes a weak spot. Uh -huh. So you want to. Not only does it look much more pretty professional, professional, right? Um, but it also helps give strength to the splice. Mm -hmm. Easiest way to do this is just unbraid it. So you're just fanning out the fibers mm -hmm. where the nice sharp scissors come into play. Cut it at a 45. And there it's essentially tapered. I got gotcha, you, yeah. We did it on one end. We have to do it on this end as well. Laying the fibers out. Same thing, just come across and cut out a 45. And that is now tapered. Back to this joint, which is called the crossover. Okay. We gently milk it, mm -hmm. and you can see the core and cover will disappear back inside. Very cool. Look at that. Make sure you're holding on to this joint as you do it. Do it several times down each end. The cover back into the core and the core back into the cover. All the slack is out of here. Mm -hmm. Come to the fun pot where we get to bury all that we have just been working on is going to disappear back inside the cover by pulling on it. Want to attach this little loop to something solid mm -hmm. on a boat, cleats, winches. We have right. a cleat here. Conveniently, <laughs> we have a cleat right here. It helps with a, with a boating show. <laughs> so, just going to drop my loop onto the cleat. Okay. And but what we're trying to do here mm -hmm. is gently 
as we're pulling on it, this is going to roll back down inside. And to demonstrate, okay. at first, Oh, look at that. You're it's just a, twisting it's it, and it's, just it's getting sucked twist. right in there. And what happens is, now this cover is starting to tighten up. We can reach down here, bring some of the slack up to introduce more. Mm -hmm. Continues to just roll right in. Wow. And so it's, yeah, it's going to form, and it's going to be that exact length that you uh, specified earlier on. That's right. It's, yep. it's magic. <laughs> it's line splicing magic, folks. It's very important as you're doing this, you want to try and keep tension, especially right at this crossover joint. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons rolling it works so well. Mm -hmm. And this will take patience and practice. Sure. Like most things. Like most things. And as we get to the point where it's almost ready to go in, mm -hmm. this right here starts getting tight. Mm -hmm. It's all bunched up in there. Okay. An easy way to alleviate that is just to flex it back and forth. Okay. And by doing so, you can feel it get softer in here. Mm -hmm. Now we're ready to do some more. a little bit more to go. We want to make sure this buries back down inside. Okay. So you want the crossover to be crossover is going to disappear. Yep. So you're just keep on flexing it and loosening it up and it's just a incremental kind of correct yep. process. Yep. On certain occasions when you get to this point right as it's about to go in, you just can't really roll any more in there. Okay. Um, one, one trick we do is to take a FID, some type of object that you can actually pull against. Sure. And when you do pull, you want to make sure it's against something solid and you're not going to fall over. <laughs> Into the water. Into the water. <laughs> but just by giving it a good hard jerk right here, yeah. tends to make this one a pop in. Okay. This one's going so nice we won't need to do that. <laughs> well. Sometimes you get lucky on, Some, on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Only needs about one more. All the slack will now be taken out of here. Mm -hmm. And there it goes. The crossover and all my little magic marker marks are all are now buried gone. down in here. Uh -huh. And there is. There it is. Great. Well, that looks very professional as well it should. <laughs> thank, <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thank you, Kevin. And there you go, folks. That's how you do a, uh, a splice double line. So, uh, again, thanks for coming by and showing us, the, showing us the ropes. <laughs> I'm Tom <laughs> Richardson good. for New England Boating. Thanks for watching.